let, let me back up uh, let me back up a bit well actually not a bit let me back up a lot uh, um, you have had a very very colorful life uh, from the 1970s with Hasik uh, Kalayaan to, uh, to PDSP, uh, which was uh, accused by Marcos, for example, in the 1970s of bombing, uh, which, was proved, was, which was also disproven. So you're clearly uh, on the side of the anti-Marcos forces during that time. Also, at the same time, you were, you were part of a group that uh, helped set up uh, the MNLF camps in Sabah, Malaysia, to train, uh, to train uh, the first batch of uh, MNLF uh, fighters. Uh, so you do have a very colorful and and, uh, and interesting history, uh, but I, I, I wonder from your point of view, do you do you do you think that people remember those points of your points of your life where you took a stand and uh, where you made your mark in history? Well, um, from what I see, I think I, I I have to go back to 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 our people. As you can see, my rating is at the bottom. I'm starting from zero, so uh, that that is an indication that people may have forgotten uh, my my involvement in the past, uh, my my activities with the uh, the government of President Arroyo. Uh, I don't know if that has been remembered. More so, my activities during the underground years. Yes. But uh, uh, given the developments of today, perhaps it's it's good. Historical history. Sir, sir Kamila na konte. Uh, in an interview with the with the program Candidates uh, 2022 uh, in, in Mindanao, uh, sponsored by among other groups, yung Minda News, uh, ang sabi po niyo, you prefer autonomy over federalism. Uh, but but at the same time, you qualify that by saying that you prefer autonomy for all the regions in the country versus federalism for all the regions in the country. Uh, could you walk us through po, the differences? Uh, of, of, of course, there are many similarities, but at the same time, uh, we'd like to see, uh, from your point of view, yung nuancing nung differences ng, na, na, na yon. Uh, why one over the other? Well, yung, yung, yung federalism, kasi, I, you know, given, the, uh, given the, the situation in the world, I think nations should have become smaller but become bigger. When, uh, when, when we propose federalism, it's more for the future, at the same time recalling some of the historical antecedents that might lead to it. You know, when during the time of Rizal and, uh, and other heroes of uh, ASEAN, of Asia, they were thinking of uniting the, the Malay race. And uh, President uh, Makapagal, if you remember, mm -hmm. And join that initiative of Mapilindo, you know, Malaya, Philippines, Indonesia, trying to form uh, a federal state. And we're saying that if we are to talk federalism, especially today, I think what would be exciting and attractive would be thinking of a federal uh, state of the ASEAN region, if not the whole of Southeast Asia. And then in the case of the Philippines, maybe we can just think of uh, autonomy for all regions if if we are saying if we're saying that the muslims should be granted autonomy and then we begin to analyze what are the basis of the request of the muslim brothers to to have autonomy essentially the problems they are citing exist in all our regions so why why offer autonomy only to our muslim brothers why not autonomy for all regions. So these are questions that I'd like to raise. And early, early in the administration, because, uh, you know, uh, having experience, the fact that when we talk of charter change, for example, uh, people are suspecting that uh, during it's the term time of President Arroyo, that uh, we are doing charter change to extend the term of President Arroyo. That is unfortunate. Because it was done just about the time when she was leaving office. In my case, I think we will start the discussion on charter change as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And ideas like uh, autonomy for all regions, shifting to the parliamentary system, maybe this should be discussed as early as possible. Kung mananalo po kayo, ano yung mga programa nyo for, for curbing corruption, for promoting good governance? No, uh, uh, part of, you know, I, I have asked friends in the international during our time how, 
how do we, paano mo kami tutulungan para maalis sa corruption? Eh, ang, uh, ang sinasabi sa akin sa corruption, simple lang naman yan eh. Uh, yung philosophy ng ating uh, public service, actually, it, when it is premised on mistrust, lalong nakakaroon ng maraming corruption. Because when you mistrust, you tend to create as, ma as many uh, steps in a given transaction para uh, kasi to check, no? kasi you mistrust. So you put so many. That in fact, during my time, I told the President, Gloria Marapagal Arroyo, na, Ma'am, if we reduce the steps in, in, uh, in the transactions with government by 50%, there's a big probability that we will reduce corruption by 50%. Because every step uh, in yes. the requirement in government transaction is an opportunity for corruption. And the more steps you add, the more temptation for people to just approach and say, sa, sa hirap naman at tagal ng transaction, magbibigay na lang ako ng something no? para mapabilis yung transaction. So, these are some of the ideas that we picked up. No? And so, what is important for corruption to be lessened or totally uh, avoided is keep everything simple. Transparent. Mm. And yung hindi ba yung kakailangan mo pang abogado para ipaliwanag yung mga rules and regulations about certain things that we do with government. 